So I'm going to change gears now a little bit and talk about something different, something that most of you have never heard of whatsoever, and it's called exosomes. And I'm going to talk about what they are and why they're relevant for this discussion. So exosomes are something that is naturally occurring in the body. Um, so I have this diagram here, and if you look at the top right of the diagram, you'll see that this is a normal cell here outlined, and inside the cell you have these vesicles. And inside of our cells there are a number of different little organs, they call them organelles, and they're generally contained by a membrane, they come in different shapes, but lots of them are in this structure, it's essentially like a spherical blob that has the same membrane as is the outer membrane of the cell, a lipid bilayer membrane, and it can contain various types of chemicals. Now, this is a specific type of uh, vesicle that um, will end up merging with the cell membrane at the surface under certain conditions and release these exosomes out into the extracellular fluid and they'll get into the circulation and be distributed around the body. So while they're inside the cell, they're called MVEs, which stands for multivesicular endosomes. So in other words, they have a bunch of exosomes or vesicles inside them. And they, they release these on a regular basis just day to day. And there are many things, though, that can induce this process and accelerate it and increase the number of exosomes that it releases outside of the cell. And so these exosomes uh, leave the cell and you see they have these little squares on them. And these little squares are like a lock. And what they do is they go around the body through the circulation and they're looking for the right um, key to fit their lock. And that's called the target cell. And depending on what kind of cell releases them, they might have different keys and different locks. So they're targeted to different parts of the body. And these are, are mostly thought to involve communication. So communication between one cell and another cell, between one part of the body and another part of the body. And they can have many functions in this communication, which I'll, I'll get to momentarily. So here on the left, uh, this is an electron uh, micrograph or a picture from an electron microscope of exosomes. And you can see here an exosome budding out of the cell and it's essentially a, a spherical or circular, this is a cross section, so this is like a, a slice of the tissue, um, where on the, on the periphery there are like these kind of globular densities or little, little dots or circles, right? And inside the cell here where it says MVP, MVB, sorry, these are the same as MVEs, uh, that's where all these exosomes are when they're inside the cell before they butt out, okay? And now we have a picture on the right, which allegedly shows this COVID-19 virus. And you can see that there are these vesicles budding out of the cell in a circular shape with these globular uh, dots on the periphery. So essentially it's the same thing. Now you might think that this looks a little bit fuzzier on the exosomes and it looks a bit sharper in this picture. And I want to tell you that the reason for that is because when you're cutting these thin sections of tissue to make these slides, you're using this device called a microtome. It's like a vibrating razor blade. And it's technically difficult. And sometimes the tissue doesn't cooperate well, or sometimes the person is less skilled. And you might not have a perfect slice. On this COVID-19 slide, this is, uh, I've not seen a better slice than this. It's absolutely perfect. The one on the left is a little bit thicker, and so that's why it looks a bit fuzzier and less sharp, but essentially you're seeing the same exact thing. And I want to uh, take a look at the same comparison when we see both of them inside of, of the host cell. Okay, so on the bottom left here, this is a COVID-19 cell. And you see right here is supposedly this is the virus particle inside the cell. And once again, you see a circular shape. And inside, you see these round globular um, aggregates. Okay. Now look at the top right. And this here there is showing you two, uh, this is less magnification. And this is actually a nerve cell. 
um, and this is the MVE. So these are a bunch of exosomes inside here. And you see a circular structure filled with these globular um, uh, particles. So once again, same thing, also same size, um, both about 500 nanometers in diameter. Okay, you see the scale lines here, so you can see for yourself. So now we have a series of two comparison photographs under electron microscope of the virus and an exosome outside the cell and a virus and an MVE inside the cell. And you can see that they are identical in appearance. So let's look at actually some physical parameters of these and make uh, continue our comparison. So we've kind of, I've mentioned a little bit that they are roughly the same size when they're inside the cell, same size when they're outside the cell. Now there is some variability here. I've looked at lots of these photographs and um, I see in both cases, there is some variability in the size. So these numbers are not precise, but in every case they are essentially compatible in their range of sizes. Now also the receptor, now this is a key, key thing. Now remember I mentioned that lock and key mechanism. Well, actually with the COVID-19 uh, um, papers, they have discovered that on its surface, it has a receptor for ACE2. Now ACE2 is uh, angiotensin converting enzyme. It's an enzyme in our bodies. One of its functions is that it, it works with the kidney to regulate blood pressure. And there are blood pressure medications that inhibit this enzyme. But in this paper, what they said is that this receptor is actually how the virus invades the cells. Now, I also was able to find a paper where they've identified exosomes coming from our own body that also use the ACE2 receptor as their lock and key mechanism to find their target cells. So exosomes and COVID-19, the same exact receptor on their surface targeting the same exact cells. Now these both contain genetic material and it's both in the form of RNA, no DNA, only RNA. And these structures are both found in the lung fluid. So the lung cancer test that I showed you earlier found exosomes in that fluid and uh, the lung fluid showed the COVID-19 as well. So you can see that the more we, we take out this comparison forward, we see that they're essentially the same in every important way. So I happen to um, uh, be looking in the virology literature and actually they also think exosomes and viruses are uh, possibly the same thing. So this is James, Dr. James Hildreth, a very prominent uh, researcher and academic physician in the field of virology and HIV research. He's currently the president and CEO of Mahari Medical College, but he was a full professor at Johns Hopkins and he wrote this paper with two of his colleagues there. And what he said, and I quote, the virus is fully an exosome in every sense of the word. Now this was just a great confirmation for what I was already thinking and I was kind of blown away when I read this in the paper because uh, this was one of the last papers I looked at um, to find this after I'd already come to the same conclusion, it really helped validate my opinion. So what is it that causes us to make more of these exosomes and throw them out into our circulation? So it turns out that almost every type of insult to the body would, would actually cause this, pro this process to occur. So toxic substances, and I found several papers looking at this. Some of them looked at um, environmental toxins, uh, such as heavy metals like arsenic, um, and organic uh, chemical toxins. Uh, also found uh, evidence about bacterial toxins, and I have a slide that I'll show you in a minute. So there's clearly has a role in um, e communication or possibly removal of toxic substances that damage our cells. Now, interestingly, psychological stress, including fear, which many, many people around the world are experiencing in a very intense way right now, 
also causes release of exosomes. So you see how this may uh, cause false positive tests. Cancer, as I mentioned before, um, lung cancer uh, uh, has many exosomes. Um, ionizing radiation, infection, injury, in fact, any type of immune response, so whether it be to injury, infection, or another disease, um, asthma. Now, many papers just said that exosomes are in, in, induced by disease, and they didn't mention anything specific, and they seem to be implying that virtually any type of disease can cause this process. Now, I really wanted to find evidence that EMF would induce exosomes, but unfortunately I could not find a paper on this. But I wanna to say to all of the people in this field of research on exosomes that this would be an excellent contribution to the literature if you were to look at this issue, if various, especially microwave radiation like 5G would cause this as well. So I wanna talk about the second paper because this is gonna help us merge these two ideas of a virus and an exosome, and are they the same thing? So this is uh, also from the group in China. Um, this one is published in the New England Journal of Medicine, and they had a slightly different uh, protocol, but essentially it was very similar. So what they did is, once again, they, they did that procedure to get the lung fluid, um, and then they centrifuged it and just took the fluid, so any cells, um, from the host, uh, like any lung cells that might be in there or bacterial cells would, would be stuck in a pellet in the bottom of the test tube. And they just took the fluid off the top, assuming that if there were viral particles, they'd be in that fluid. But they didn't actually then try to purify the virus out of that fluid. Instead, they mixed it with, with cells that they took from a, uh, a person who had lung cancer surgery and they incubated it with the lung cancer cells. Now you remember, I said earlier, and I showed experimental evidence that lung cancer cells make exosomes. So when they then purified particles after incubating this fluid with the lung cancer cells and then examined them under the microscope, well, were they looking at viral particles or were they looking at exosomes? And I have two images below, and one is supposedly the viral particle from this paper, and the other is an exosome. Can you tell the difference? Here is um, another uh, slide showing the functions of exosomes as they can remove toxins. So in the upper right here, these uh, green cells are actually bacteria. And by the way, this image, all electron micrograph images are always in black and white. If you see an image like this, this has been colorized after the fact, and they did that to help you identify what is what. So I, I think this is actually quite a nice approach, and this is a real slide. It's very different from some of the slides that, that you've seen that are just computer graphics that are made by an artist. So these particles that they colored purple are uh, the toxins uh, released by the bacteria, and uh, they, if they were allowed to contact the cell membrane, they would actually bore little holes in there and the cell's contents would leak out and it would die. Um, so what's happening is that the cell put out these yellow exosomes once it, once it realized these toxins were there, and you see they're all budding out of the central area of the cell, and you can see they're basically swallowing up the little toxin particles. And so in this experiment, what they actually did is that they found that when they mixed cells with the bacteria, if the cells put out the exosomes that ate up the toxins, then the cell survived. If the cells were mixed with the bacteria and they did not put out the exosomes, then the cells died. So this was done you know, in a Petri dish, not in a person, but so we can't say for sure, but, but what this is really telling us is that these exosomes help us clear these toxins so that they don't damage our tissue. So a very important function. 